Hi, this is Lainey Cameron. Today I am here with Chris Klink, and we're going to talk about her debut novel. It's always so exciting to talk about debuts. Hey. Goodbye, Lark Lovejoy. Hey, Chris. Thanks Hi. for joining me. Thank you Thank for you. having me, Lainey. This is an incredible podcast you have, and I'm just honored to be on it. Oh, I'm glad you're honored. And I love having debut authors because it's not very long ago, like last year that I was a debut myself. And it's such a fun moment in time, but it's also a bit nerve wracking when you're putting your work into the world for the it's first time. Terrifying. It's terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying. That's a good way to say it. It's terrifying. So one of the things I wanted to do is read a little bit of my own blurb because it's kind of fun when I get asked to blurb a book, which means that I wrote I wrote a, a review far in advance of it coming out. And here's what I said about this book. I said, it's a touching tale about moving past grief, building the life you want, motherhood in all its forms, and finding love again against the odds. Aww. So yeah. tell me from your perspective, tell us what the book's about. Tell us a little bit more about it. It's really about redefining yourself and and the main character has has spent the last five years either having children, caring for children or caring for her husband who was suffering from ALS. And so she's at a point in her life where she's she's just lost him and she's got these she's got a three year old and a five year old to care for. And now an opportunity appears that she can sell her house and make a lot of money. So she's going to go home um, to Fredericksburg. And so in doing so, she finds that the area has totally, you know, the wine country is real. Wine has really taken off along the Texas Hill Country wine trail since she had left. And originally that's what she wanted to do for a living when she left there for college. And she chickened out on the winemaking job after 9-11 and went to law school. So this really, it's kind of in her face that this is what you gave up and now it's all around you and you don't want to be a lawyer. And so she's really, she thinks she's going home to lick her wounds and really God has a funny sense of humor and he's going to hand her a lot of, a lot of interesting situations. It's going to make her question her decisions and, and what she wants to do moving forward. And do you know what is the nicest thing I saw in your reviews so far? I love this phrase. Someone wrote, this book gave me hope that life can be beautiful again, despite the losses life can unexpectedly send your way. Oh, well, thank you. Yeah, there's a character in the book that's an elderly uh, woman and she's found love again. And she says she encourages Lark to find spectacular happiness. And that those two words come back to me whenever I think about, you know, I'm kind of having a bad day. And it's like, you've got to look for the spectacular happiness because it's there. We just have to look for it. And it's not always real easy to find. And especially now when a lot of people have been through really difficult situations oh, in the yeah. last year, there's so much grief. I, I loved reading a book that's about suffering through that worst grief and coming out the other side and realizing life can still be beautiful. Well, and in, in not just for her, but also for, for the male character too, because he has suffered immense pain and, you know, that just that self, the loss of his job and his, you know, as part of his body. And, and so it was really fun to get to have those two people who are, have nothing in common, you know, have their, their stories collide and, and see where it goes. So it's, well, they obviously have a lot in common because yeah. they end up <laughs> falling deeply in love with each other, not giving anything away <laughs> I think, from the description. Uh, so where did the idea come from? How did, what's the germ of how this all started? You no, know, I was always, I had started a couple books that are back when my children were small. I was always going to be a writer. I didn't want to, I was going to do an MFA and then I, in or undergrad. And I thought, oh no, I'm going to have to study Chaucer. No, I'll just, I'll just be a writer. And you know, it's always so easy to be a writer, right? That's what people say. Oh, I, I can be a writer. Well, no, it's not that easy. But so I did something else, but all along, I've always said I was going to write this book. And I was in Green, Texas with my family. I think we figured out it was like 2007, maybe. And my children were much young, younger. And we, it was the first time we'd been there. And we, I walked into the Green Dance Hall, which is one of the oldest dance halls in the country. And just like, in the, just like my character describes, the, the planks bent under my feet. And I said to my husband, I don't know what the story is, but when I write it, this is going to be part of it. And that was years. I started that. I, I didn't start it until about five years ago. So it tells you a long time passed before I actually got it started. But but that place really stuck with me. And, and it was like, I don't know, you could almost like feel all the people that had been there before you. And it just was magical. And I just 
couldn't wait to go back in my own way. Wow, that's fabulous. And I'm going to ask you more about the character of Lark, because she's a wonderful character that you created bit there. But first, let's peek at one review from Alison Hammer, who herself is a fabulous author whose second book is coming out this same month, actually, in April. Um, I loved how she captures some of these words. Lark Lovejoy is fierce, funny, and unforgettable. <laughs> and your debut is heartwarming, um, uplifting. I think heartwarming warming might be the number one word I'm seeing in all your reviews. And reminds us that it's never too late to go after your dreams, that age is just a number, and you can find love in unexpected places. What a, a beautiful review from the person that I consider my kind of... Um, want to get there writer because her writing is so beautiful and heartfelt and whenever I read something that Allison writes I'm like one day I will write like that too. So. <laughs> I don't know that I'm ever going to be able to write like Allison but, but what, I, I'll hope. <laughs> so talk to me about um, Lark. Did she come to you fully formed? Did she have to change over time? Like I know books change a lot during editing. How, what about this book? How did it change? Are your characters the same or not? She was the same from the beginning. She was very, I don't know, you know, there were parts of this book that just kind of, it's like water, you know, just add water and it, they came together. And, and um, I just, I saw her from the beginning. I saw her with the curly blonde hair and the brilliant blue eyes. And, and she was somebody who everybody thought she was, you know, little Miss Sunshine. And yet here she was coming back as this broken person, but you know, she doesn't know how they're going to see her when she comes back. And so it was just really fun taking, I, I love taking characters who have those flaws and, and turning them like, like the Kermit character um, or like Walter Cronkite, the dog to turn, <laughs> turn, turn it on its other end a little bit. And, and you find out why they're there. And, you know, my characters are not there unless they're supposed to be there uh, for a reason. And so it's, it's really fun. And with Lark, it was, she was just a great vehicle to draw all these other people in. Bianca is just, I, I, my third book is Bianca's story and I'm writing it now. And she came to me in the middle of the night and she was Bianca and I, she always has been. So it's great. Anyway. So do your books change a lot during editing or do they start off very much close to where they end up? No, this, the first book, the story remained the same, but there were, there was a lot about, um, I did a lot of research on, um, Con, um, Afghanistan and Kabul and and all of the operations that went on over there to get Wyatt's story down. And I visited the Center for the Intrepid in San Antonio. But so much of that, you know, got cut because there's only so many pages and it's got to be Lark's story and Wyatt's was secondary to Lark. So um, there was a lot of that. And the funniest thing, though, about this book is that the TED talk at the beginning, I didn't find that TED talk until I was in one of my last revisions. And if you, and I don't want to give anything away, but if you recall how the story ends, that particular, that particular uh, TED talk about how the people, you know, bury their dead and all that rings true at the end. And it was like, a, I mean, it was like, Mana from heaven. I'm like, okay, how can I not use this? And so it was, it was really, you know, they're just writing a book, you know, writing a book is a little bit of alchemy and a little bit of pixie dust. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't yeah, know I, I love Wyatt, the, the character of Wyatt, who has who PTSD, but he's not. I've read many characters with PTSD and I didn't find him to be a trope or um, kind of been there, seen that. I find like you did a lovely job of portraying him as like very self-aware. He knows what he's dealing with and he doesn't want to put anyone else at risk from what he's dealing right. with himself. So that makes him even more of a hero. And so like, I, I really thought he was portrayed in a very sensitive way. To me, you did an excellent job with his character. And that love, the love scene that's in the book is there very not just because we we all like a good love scene, right? Oh yeah, but it was because that was the only way I could see to really share his story and convey what he's what he's hiding on the inside. And so that's that's kind of why, you know, darn, I had to write that love scene, but it was a lot of fun too. I'm trying <laughs> to remember who who it was that it was another writer. It might have been Denise Williams or someone who writes romance and women's fiction or women's fiction, and they were saying. Um, the purpose of love scenes is to show our characters that they're most vulnerable. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was exactly what you did there yeah. to the point, right? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. 
So uh, what about writing advice? I mean, you've made it this far. You've got your debut. It's coming out. It's getting great reviews. So when you talk to folks who are a few years back from where you are, what advice do you give them? Um, write, write. You know, you cannot edit what is not written. You can, you know, focus on that sentence for three days, but, you know, write the damn sentence and keep on going and come back to it when the whole book is written. And the other thing is voice. I mean, I worked with a professional editor for a while before I, you know, midway through writing this and she helped me immensely. But I also, in going back, I felt like I lost part of my voice in that version of it. And while I learned a lot, I, I joke about that was my my um, quick MFA <laughs> was working with the editor. She's really talented and very patient with me. But I had to go back in and put my voice back in it. And what I what I the way I describe it is it's like if you've ever seen the movie Coal Miner's Daughter about Loretta Lynn, mm -hmm. if you were to tell that story using perfect grammar and be and using the same voice as anybody else on the block might be telling it it wouldn't be the same story. You have to tell it both with the character's voice and your voice. And so that's something that I would encourage uh, uh, writers to do is really just write, write, write until, until you really get that down. And, and then you get a little more confident about, well, no, I'm not going to change that. That's what the character says. And that's how it needs to be. And so right or wrong, sometimes it's not grammatically correct. And that's just the way it is. That's great. Uh, Barbara O'Neill also had fabulous um, advice on voice. Her advice was, mm -hmm look at what people say you're good at. And if people keep saying you're good at something, double down on it because that's part of your voice. Oh, that, is such good, that is such good advice. I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> so reading, have you read anything good recently? Oh, yes. I kind of went through a stage where I wasn't reading as much this last year or even listening to audiobooks. I'm a big audiobook fan. But I, I stumbled upon the Jake Ryan Complex by Bethany Crandall, and that is... It made me laugh. It had, it was heartwarming. It had just a lovely love story and, and a great character arc. And then I also just finished, I like today I finished the chicken sisters and I thought that was a really fun read too. So I loved that KJ Delantonia. It's so yeah. fun. And it's got those same heartwarming vibes as your book. Yeah. I feel like they're both in that kind of gooey heartwarming. I feel warm and lovely after I read this book category. Oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> well, that's fabulous. Well, before we go, let me ask about book two and three, because you mentioned that there's a third book and this is a trilogy, I think. Right. So tell us a little bit more about what's coming in the future after book one. Well, book two, I chose a character that we really don't see very much of in, in book two, in book one. And it's Sissy Klein. And her dad is the is the attorney that kind of rubs Lark the wrong way during the interview. And so her the third or the second book starts when she's 16 years old and, and there's a night she doesn't remember, but she ends up pregnant and it goes through from the time she's 16 till 34. Now keep in mind, this is not like a thousand page book. It's, it's the same. It's actually shorter than my first book, but it goes through every, she's put everything she can into giving her child the life that she's now given up by making a family with this man and then when the daughter's the same age that she is, something happens that puts the daughter back at square one. And it really makes Sissy reevaluate re um, her, her choices. And, and it kind of gives, she, she was in a bit of an abusive, I don't want to say not necessarily physically abuse, but abuse is abuse. It's just in different levels. And, and she was in a bit of an abusive relationship and she, um, I, I wanted it. I wanted it to say that it's not always that easy. You know, it'd be easy to read this and go, "Well, gosh, she should." I didn't like that. She should get out of there. But that's not always so easy. And people make hard. You have to make hard decisions based on you know what's important to you. And in this character's case, it's her child. And so that's that's kind of where I went with that. And the third book is Bianca's story. And and I had a lot of Bianca's story fleshed out for the first book, but it got cut. And so she had something very traumatic happened um, when she was a child and, and it led her into a, a life with her mother that was not, not a healthy lifestyle. And so she's come back as an, we see her as an adult in this great situation now, but we're going to, we're going to learn a lot more about what happened. Wow. Now. That, that sounds like they're very far along for the first one just coming out. Are we going to see them like in short order, like the within the next year? Or two? Yeah, the second one will be out in September. That's already turned in, covers done, all that. Third one, 
I'm writing. <laughs> all of this. I'm that's still fast. Like to have the first one in April and the second one in September. That's great. I mean, those who love the story can keep going. They can binge these. That's fabulous. Everybody else will go again. <laughs> I love it. Well, let's take a quick peek at how people connect with you, can connect with you if they'd like to. All right. You're at Chris Clink Books on Instagram and chrisclink.com. Everybody can find all your other social media and every other way to follow you there. Right. And the book is out now this very week. So wow. I encourage folks to go check it out. You can go buy it, download it right now today. And congratulations. This is a big moment in an author's career, getting well, your first book you. into the world. I'm just, I'm honored to be here. And thank you for, for showcasing my book and reading it. Yeah, no problem. And the best of luck here. Take care. Thank you so much.